Hello and welcome back to my next part in my countdown. This um, concludes part five. Five parts to go, one already done, another one being prepared. So on this video we are going from number 60 to 51. We left off the last video on 61, so we'll go from 60 to 51. Um, to see which fighters just failed to break into my top 50. So when we think about the numbers, um, let us jump into number 60. And number 60 is a former heavyweight champion. Um, number 60 is the Eastern Assassin, Larry Holmes, one of the great technically proficient heavyweight champions I have seen. Larry Holmes was lineal world heavyweight champion, and Larry Holmes had 16 fights against world champions and beat nine individual champions, which is a good tally for his era um, for a one-division fighter. Now, Larry Holmes also had 25 world title fights in his career, and Larry Holmes won 20 of those um, and made a Staggering 19 defences to make him one of the longest reigning um, heavyweight champions of all time. And Larry Holmes to show his title fight experience for a massive 264 title fight rounds. Now Larry Holmes was top 10 rated as a heavyweight for a full decade at 10 years. And a massive 9 of those 10 years he was top 3 rated. And Larry Holmes was also rated as ring champion for 5 years. And another little stat that Larry Holmes doesn't get full credit for. He does have a massive knockout rate in title fights. Uh, with a big tally scoring 14 KOs in title fights. Which even amongst Heavyweight champions, barring obvious picks like Joe Lewis, um, Sam Langford, is a hell of a lot of KOs in title fights. Something he goes a bit underrated for, the amount of stoppages he gets in title fights. So, Larry Holmes, when we go on to his major opponents, Larry Holmes beat Ken Norton, okay? Um, he also beat Mike Weaver on two occasions, beat what was left of Muhammad Ali, beat Trevor Burbick, beat Tim Witherspoon um, in a very tough fight. He beat Leon Spinks, beat Bonecrusher, James Smith, on two occasions, beat fighters like Ray Mercer. He beat... Um, murderous punch at Ernie Shavers two times and top contenders and dangerous contenders like Jerry Cooney and tough Ronaldo Snipes. He also lost to Michael Spinks two times, Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, Oliver McCall amongst his defeats. So Larry Holmes is in number 60. Let us now jump to a modern Mexican great in number 59. And of course, it is three-weight world champion Julio Cesar Chavez. Now, Chavez has an underrated career in many regards. Chavez was a three-weight world champion, and he was also a two-weight, three-time lineal champion. So he was a lineal champion three times in two weights, as well as a three-weight champion. Now, Julio Cesar Chavez had 24 fights in his career against world champions and beat a very high 15 world champions in his career. Julio Cesar Chavez also set some alphabet era records, okay? Set an alphabet era record of 37 world title fights. Hopkins came close with 31, but no one can match Chavez's mass number of title fights. He also set an alphabet era record of 27 title defences, successful title defences. Now, Julio Cesar Chavez, to say he didn't fight anybody, he did have 32 fights against top 10 rated fighters, and many of them were tough guys, um, underrated fighters like um, Rocky Lockridge, etc., now, Julio Cesar Chavez also was a puncher, as well as scoring 45 knockouts inside three rounds or less. Chavez also scored an enormous 22 KOs in world title fights. And Chavez was rated monumentally for 17 years as a top 10 rated fighter. And from those 17 years, Julio Cesar Chavez was also top 3 rated for well over a decade. 13 years as a top 3 rated fighter, showing um, A's longevity as a top 10 and top uh, top 10 and top 3 rated contender. Julio Cesar Chavez beat names including Roger Mayweather twice, um, the Black Mamba, R Rocky Lockridge, Juan Laporte, Edwin Rosario, Rafael Limon, Jose Luis Ramirez, Meldrick Taylor two times, Hector Camacho, Tony Lopez, Greg Haugen, Frankie Randall two times. He also lost fights to fighters like Frankie Randall, the first man to beat him, Oscar De La Hoya twice, and Koshizu, amongst others. So Julio Cesar Chavez set some alphabet era records as a massive title fight history for a lot of good fighters. Let us now jump on to number 58, and it's another fellow who held a lightweight and light welterweight title like Chavez. But this fighter to me is underrated, and that is the great multiple time champion Carlos Ortiz. Carlos Ortiz was a two-weight, three-time lineal and undisputed champion, a three-time undisputed champion. And Carlos Ortiz, the great Ortiz, beat five world champions and also beat five Hall of Fame fighters individually. 
Carlos Ortiz also, like Holmes um, and like Chavez, had a lot of world title fights. He had 18 world title fights. Um, he won 14 of those and also made 11 defences. Now, Carlos Ortiz's world title fights were not for singular alphabet belts. They were for undisputed or world titles, okay, pretty much. So he had a lot of world title fights for all the beans. Carlos Ortiz also had 32 fights against top 10 rated fighters and he also had 26 fights. 26 fights against top three rated fighter and Carlos Ortiz was a three-time undisputed champion who also won six world title belts in his career so highly accomplished at title level also fought lots of good opposition he held wins over Du Ilio Loy, Joe Brown he bet Gabriel Little Flashy Lord the great Filipino fighter two times bet the underrated Ishmael Laguna two times beat Sugar Ramos two times beat good contender Kenny Lane three times beat Dave Shanley beat Len Matthews and beat Paolo Rossi. He also in his career lost two times to do Ilio Loy in their trilogy. He also lost to fighters like Carlos Tio Cruz um, and the Scottish fighter Ken Buchanan who would later of course be defeated um, by Roberto Duran. So Carlos Ortiz is another of those fighters who has a good resume, fought lots of top contenders, had a lot of world title fights. He's also very accomplished at title level and even many of his defeats were to top fighters or ring champions etc etc are undisputed champions so there is Carlos Ortiz in number 58 now ahead of Carlos Ortiz in the next two spots are two middleweight fighters the first middleweight fighter featuring at number 57 is the marvelous one marvelous Marvin Hagler now Marvin Hagler is one of the true middleweight greats he was undisputed lineal middleweight champion and he was undisputed lineal middleweight champion for many years Marvin Hagler had 15 world title fights at middleweight only losing one um, to Sugar Ray Leonard and he also made 12 title defences in that time now Marvin Hagler was a top 10 rated fighter for 11 years another interesting point all 11 of those years Hagler was top 10 rated he was top 3 rated for all 11 years years and Hagler of course being a long reigning lineal champion was also ring champion at the time um, being rated ring champion for seven years that is enormous and Hagler was also a puncher scoring over half century of knockouts at 52 and also scoring 24 KOs inside three rounds and Marvin Hagler beat six individual world champions in his career and beat two hall of fame fighters of course we don't know what will happen in the future so Marvin Hagler beat more good names than people credit him for he bet Vito Antifermo he bet Alan Minter he bet former world champion Fulgencio Obelmeas two times he bet Roberto Duran he beat Thomas the Hitman Hearns in that great war he beat John Mugabe he beat tough um, Philly fighters Bobby Watts Willie Monroe two times he beat former Olympic gold medalist Sugar Ray Seals two times he beat the murderous punching Cyclone Hart Dangerous middleweight contender Benny Briscoe, who was a top 10 rated middleweight for nearly a decade. Also beat fighters like Kevin Finnegan, who I'm rolled down, um, and Mustafa Hamshow, who he beat twice. He also lost to fighters like Sugar Ray Leonard. He lost to Bobby Watts, which he avenged, and he lost to Willie Monroe, which he also avenged. In fact, the only defeat Hagler did not avenge was Sugar Ray Leonard. His other defeats, um, the three from near 70 fights, he actually avenged um, in wins over two of those three fighters who beat him. So Hagler's at 57, and Hagler, career side-by-side, side, very similar to this fighter, but I just edged this fighter ahead of him, and of course, it is the South American great Carlos Monzon, a fantastic fighter he was. Carlos Monzon was lineal and two-time undisputed middleweight champion. He lost one of his belts, but then reunified it with Rodrigo Valdez. So actually, in his title reign, he was undisputed champion twice. Carlos Monzon was unbeaten in eight fights against champions and beat five individual champions. He was unbeaten in five fights against Hall of Famers, beating three individual. And he was also unbeaten in 15 world title fights. And Carlos Monzon pipped Hagler, who came in with 12 defences. Carlos Monzon actually made 14 defences from his 15 title fights. And Carlos Monzon was also unbeaten in 20 fights against top 10 rated fighters. Carlos Monzon was rated for nine years as a top 10 middleweight and seven of those years um, he was top three rated um, and all of those years he was top three rated Carlos Monzon 
um, for all seven years was also regarded as ring champion. Also, like Hagler, held the lineal title for many years on the trot. And another interesting point about Carlos Monzon after earlier defeats, fighting some very tough and capable fighters and also taking into fact of the point scoring rules for fights in South America. Um, when he actually spread, he was actually unbeaten in the last 80 fights of his career. So he had an 80 fight unbeaten run. Um, and all through his middleweight reign, never lost or prior to it for many years. Carlos Monzon beat Nino Benvenuti times the multiple time undisputed champion. He also beat the six time lineal champion Emil Griffith two times and also beat fighters like Denny Moyer, the welterweight great Jose Napoles, tough Rodrigo Valdez two times. He also beat bad Benny Briscoe, beat contenders like Tom Boggs, Jean-Claude Boutier two times, Tony Mundine and Tony Licata. Carlos Monzon, the only defeats he suffered in his career, and there were only three of them from virtually 100 fights, were against lower-grade opposition in his first 19 professional fights. From his 19th fight to his 99th fight, he did not lose a fight, which is an incredible run considering the opposition he fought and all the top contenders he fought. So, there is the great Carlos Monzon in 56. Now, ahead of him in 55 is another great multi-weight champion, and it is the explosive thin man, the great Alexis Arguello, who has one of the best KO records in title fights. So, Arguello is a three-weight world champion at feather, super feather, and lightweight, and he tried at light welter against the Hawk Aaron Pryor. He was also a two-weight lineal champion, holding lineal titles at featherweight and lightweight. And Alexis Arguello was nine years rated as a top 10 fighter, all nine years he was top three rated as well, and Alex Sarguello also across the divisions was rated four years as ring champion. Now Alex Sarguello has another long glittering title fight record. He had 22 world title fights in total, he won 19 of those um, and made a staggering 16 title defences across the various weights he titled. Now one thing about Alex Sarguello is his KO record in title fights is fantastic. So KOs in title fights, he scored five KOs in five title fight wins at Feather. He scored eight KOs from nine title fight wins at Super Feather and scored four KOs from five title fight wins at Lightweight. He has an astonishing knockout record at world title level. Alex Sarguello also had 28 fights against top 10 rated fighters, winning 24 of them. Of course, two of those defeats are to Adam Pryor, another one to Ernesto Marcel, who was a very good fighter amongst others. So, Alex Arguello beat the capable Jose Legra. He also beat Mexican great Ru uh, Ruben Olivares. He also beat um, Rigoberto Riasco. He beat Royal Kobayashi. He beat long-reigning super featherweight champion Alfredo Escalera on two occasions, and he also fought and beat tough champions or Hall of Famers like Rafael Lamon and Bobby Chacon. He also beat Filipino champion, okay, Rolando Navarrete, and then beat Ray Mancini and Jose Luis Ramirez, amongst others. And some of the fighters that are Alex Sarguello lost to, he lost of course to the Hawk Adam Pryor twice, he lost to Ernesto Marcel, he also lost to Villamar Fernandez, so a selection of his um, wins and losses there. Alex Sarguello was a great pound for pound puncher, had a great title fight record, very decorated at title level has won at best KO records at title level. Fantastic. He's in number 55. Now, in number 54, we go to a modern um, ATG, Roy Jones Jr., now, Roy Jones Jr. is a four-weight world champion in weights covering the divisions from middleweight to heavyweight. And Roy Jones Jr. had a massive 27 fights against world champions and beat 19 individual world champions. Roy Jones, as well as being decorated at title level um, and fighting lots of world champions, also had a big title fight record. He had in total 25 world title fights. He won 22 of those, only losing three, and also made a staggering 18 title defences across the various weights. Roy Jones also fought a lot of top 10 rated competition, having 38 fights against top 10 rated fighters, winning 29 of them. And Roy Jones, like Larry Holmes, also scored high in KOs in title fights, coming in with 14. Now, when we look at how long and consistently he was rated, Roy Jones was top 10 rated for a staggering 18 years. Now, 14 of those years, Roy Jones was top 3 rated, and Roy Jones also was ring champion in his career for 3 years. And he won a staggering number of eight individual world titles in his career as in some recaptured but eight world titles overall won Roy Jones beat fighters including Bernard Hopkins James Tony, Mike McCallum Quicksilver Virgil Hill he beat Monto Griffin Vinny Pazienza Reggie Johnson Antonio Tava Felix Trinidad John Ruiz 
Clinton Woods and Thelani Malinga, who's a former champion amongst others. He lost, including to others, Bernard Hopkins, Montel Griffin. He lost twice to Antonio Tava, an underrated light heavyweight of um, recent decades. And also lost to fighters like Denis Lebedev um, and, of course, the Welsh fighter Joe Calzaghe. So Roy Jones again consistently long rated as a top 10 and top 3 fighter also with a large staggering title fight record a huge list of title fight accomplishments and world titles um, and some great names on there as well so Roy Jones Jr comes in at 54 and the top the second bottom the bottom top 50 kind of encapsulates a lot of the good modern fighters in it because they can't match the super CVs of fighters to come so, in 53rd place, we have another undefeated fighter, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Floyd Mayweather Jr. comes in at 53. He was a five-weight lineal champion from super feather to light middleweight. And Floyd was also a five-weight world champion, winning a staggering 11 world titles in total. Floyd Mayweather Jr. had 24 fights against champions going unbeaten against them and beat 22 individual champions. Now, Floyd was also unbeaten in world title fights, um, coming in with 26 world title fights, of which of course he was unbeaten and also making 18 title defences overall. Now Floyd Mayweather Jr. had 27 fights against top 10 rated fighters. He won all of them and Floyd also had a staggering number of 22 fights against top 3 rated fighters in which he won all of them as well. And when we look at how long he was rated and um, being another modern fighter like Roy Jones, Floyd Mayweather was rated top 10 fighter for 19 years. He was also staggeringly a 19 year top three rated fighter every year that Floyd Mayweather were rated he were rated top three Floyd also very nearly hit the decade as a um, ring champion being rated in various divisions where he held ring titles altogether being rated as a ring champion for nine of those 19 years he was rated so virtually a full half of the 19 years he was top 10 rated he was actually ring champion so when we look at some names, Floyd Mayweather Jr. beat Gennaro Hernandez, whose only other defeat had been to the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. He also beat Diego Corrales, Jose Luis Castillo two times, Arturo Gatti, Zab Judah, Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky Hatton, Juan Manuel Marquez, Shane Mosley, Miguel Cotto, Canelo Alvarez, Manny Pacquiao, Andre Berto, Carlos Baldemir, and you could go on. Uh, Floyd beat a lot of good opposition, very long and consistently rated as a top fighter. Massive title fight record. Great title accomplishments. Floyd Mayweather Jr., of course, was unbeaten, so has no defeats against any fighters, so none listed. So there's Floyd in number 53, just ahead of him in number 52. He's actually the hitman Thomas Ernst. Thomas Ernst was a five-weight world champion and also um, held the lineal light middleweight championship. And Thomas Ernst altogether held six world title belts. Now, Thomas Ernst had 19 fights against world champions and beat 13 individual champions at a time, of course, when there were not as many belts. He kind of crossed over from the years from the two belt to the three to the four. Um, but in his earlier career, there was not as many champions. Otherwise, no doubt he would have beaten more. Thomas Ernst also beat four individual Hall of Fame fighters. And Thomas Ernst also was a big puncher, scoring 48 knockouts in his career. And a staggering 31 of those 48 KOs were in three rounds or less. So if you went more than three rounds with Hearns, you'd done well. Thomas Ernst also had a lot of world title fights coming in with 19 World title fights, he won 14 of those um, high-profile defeats to Hagler and Sugar Ray Leonard included in his defeats. And he also scored nine KOs. And Thomas Ernst had 31 fights against top 10 rated fighters. Another fascinating thing about Thomas Ernst is he could knock out or hurt cruiserweights and light heavyweights, even though he first titled at welterweight. And that is something that really highlights a pound-for-pound -pound puncher when they can fight not bigger men in size, but bigger men in weight, naturally bulkier men, and ice them out. Not many fighters can do that. So Hearns beat Virgil Hill. He beat Doug DeWitt. He beat Dennis Andres. He destroyed Roberto Duran. He also beat Wilfred Benitez. Long reigning welterweight champion puncher Pepino Cuevas. He beat Angela Espada, Murray Sutherland, Eddie Garzo, Bruce Curry. And he also lost fights to the marvellous one Marvin Hagler, Sugar Ray Leonard. He ran Barkley two times and later in his career lost to former champion Uriah Grant. So Thomas Hearns not only has a lot of accomplishments, he's also one of the great pound for pound punchers um one punch knockout power crippling speed coupled with that power made him one of the most dangerous fighters of all time 
So Thomas Sands comes in at number 52. Now in number 51, of course, we have one of Thomas Sands' great rivals missing out on the top 50 um, just due to lack of fights. And that is Sugar Ray Leonard, who was a five-weight world champion. And Sugar Ray Leonard was also a four-time three-weight lineal champion. Um, he was a two-time lineal welterweight champion, then had a two-mark lineal title, so he's a four-time lineal champion. And Sugar Ray Leonard won seven world title belts overall. Sugar Ray Leonard also beat six individual world champions um, and beat four individual Hall of Fame fighters in his career. Now, Sugar Ray Leonard had 13 world title fights. He won 10 of those um, and made six title defences overall across the five weights he titled in. And Sugar Ray Leonard was top 10 rated for eight years. All eight of those years, Sugar Ray Leonard was top three rated. And Sugar Ray Leonard was also a four-year ring champion. Now, some of the names that Sugar Ray Leonard beat, okay, he beat Wilfred Benitez, he beat the great Roberto Duran two times, he bet Ayab Kalul, he bet the hitman Thomas Cerns, he bet Marvellous Marvin Hagler, he bet other fighters, contenders, champions like Donny Lalonde, um, he iced Dave Boy Green with a three-punch combo, ending with that brutal left up, and he also beat fighters like Floyd May with a senior, Armando Muniz and Bruce Curry. Um, Sugar Ray Leonard also lost to fighters including uh, Roberto Duran, Terry Norris and Hector Camacho. And they were the only three defeats of Sugar Ray Leonard's career. He also, of course, had the draw to the hitman Tommy Hearns. So Sugar Ray Leonard is, is at 51. Now, some people think some of these fighters may be a bit low. Um, but you have to understand my criteria, okay? It's not as diverse as how many titles or belts or names you've beat. It's many things. Your punch power, your activity, the fight runs, all kinds of things, okay? And sadly, many of the modern fighters just don't have large enough careers to go much further. Um, there's only one fighter from the real modern era who has gone further than this, but that will be revealed in time. One of my favourites at modern era. But there's 60 to number 51. I'll be back soon with the next part of my series. <laughs> 